a happy new year to you hallelujah it's my first day in church in 2022 i am excited to be amongst the living the lord has done me well hallelujah before we went on on, on a break we um we were looking at a series the journey and when we started we started with an overview of what it meant we said that every single one of us walking with god and walking in god is on a journey we said that we were clear where we start from and we have an idea what the destination is we said the in between is where the work is and we said that people don't journey at the same pace and people don't journey in the same exact way it, uh, yet at the end of the day we arrive at the same exact place that god has called us to we left from there we went to the next one we said we called it the promise we said for each and every one of us there is a word and the word sounds something like this is always a variant of i will never leave you i will never forsake you i will bring you to the end i will perform my will concerning you now we said that because this journey is winded it's a long one sometimes it's one that we don't understand most of the time we definitely need this word and we said that the promise is a sure one heaven and earth may pass away but the word of god will remain from there we went to the route we said that the seed god chooses to travel with us through the scenic route where you find and see many things you did not know exist he said in jeremiah he said call upon me and i will show you great and mighty things that you have not known so when we begin to journey with god he takes us on an adventure he takes us he makes details with us he takes us high up he brings us down low and because he wants us to see his good old earth and he wants us to see all the things that he had created for our pleasure the thing with that route is we don't like it we want the shortcut we want to get where we're going in seven days and god doesn't travel like that from there we walked about we moved the way to the guide we said as onerous as this trip might be sometimes the good news is that someone goes with us God has a designate travel companion to go with us. So no matter what happens, no matter when, even when you miss your way, the travel companion is there to help you re, what's the word, reroute you or recalibrate your journey and bring you to the coordinates that will take you where you need to go. From there, we looked at the language. We said that we're speaking the wrong language most of the time. And that kingdom has a language. And as long as you know how kingdom should speak, and you speak how kingdom will speak, should speak, there is a dignity that follows your journey because you know how to speak. From there, we went to the fact that you don't journey on this route anyhow. There is also a specific get up. There is a wardrobe that God has called us to wear. And so when you are going, one of the ways that we people are bummed off the track is that they are not dressed properly in what they should be wearing we took a look at that and from there we went to travel companions we talked about the fact that even though god gives us a guide he also makes sure that at every time every point or junction of our trip with him there are all the people that he puts on the journey with us so the idea is yes god goes with me but human beings go with me as well so not one of us is called to journey alone you may start alone but you never travel alone after a while men and women will show up because these are the resources that god is put on the path to ensure that you endure and get where you need to get to this travel company companions come with their contributions some of them understand trees on the way so they know which which tree is poisonous or which which um uh, uh, yes which plant is poisonous and which one is edible some of them understand water so when you get to water they can tell you whether this is fresh or this is not fresh water some of them know how to swim some of them are excellent mountain climbers so when you get at the foot of the mountain and you're wondering lord how did 
did I get here? Someone manifests and says, I know this one. I may not have understood all the other ones you're doing, but you see, this is my thing. And they pick you up and they take you up. So in the end, what was meant to be a lonely journey becomes a journey that you travel with people. And the Bible says, iron sharpened iron. You begin to rub off on each other. And more and more, as Jesus rubs off on us and we rub off on each other, we are collectively beginning to look like a family because that's what God set out to do with us. The last thing we talked about before the break was that we talked about rest up. We said after sometimes on this journey we're tired sometimes we're thirsty sometimes parts of our bodies begin to malfunction and we have to stop and take rest and we said that rest stops always has people even in our re at our rest stops they have people who should give us water they have people who, whose job is to hold glucose and wait for us on that journey there are people whose job it is to make sure that our tires that are worn are taken out and fresh ones are put there are people who check our engine oils to make sure that our engine is is not on the way to knocking because we are joining a long journey and yet we are not done with the journey today we want to look at something i have called the difference because as much as god entrenches us in families as excellent as it is that he puts people at the pit stop or this um, or the rest stop to get us when we get to them there is still something that God does with us. Each one of us is still unique on this journey. So there are no two of Pastor Vars. Even if Pastor Vars were a twin, there are no two the same of them. I mean, even if they were, he was an identical twin. You know something would differentiate him from his brother. It would be his thumbprint. And so as excellent as God is planned it, he still made sure that you don't lose your uniqueness. But we live in a world that loves sameness. Difference strengthens the world. So even though you are unique, 80% of the time, you do your best to acclimatize and adapt and become like the next person. Because it seems like when you are like the next person, then the next person, the next person is selling. Then when you are like him, you would sell. But today I have come to say to you that on this journey, it is wisdom to embrace your difference. It is wisdom to embrace your difference. It is wisdom to embrace your difference. I didn't need someone to tell me as I was growing up that I was different. Up to tomorrow when I look at my siblings, they know, I know, my parents know that I'm different. And sometimes difference can become a burden. But difference becomes, difference becomes a burden because you do not understand difference. When you understand and you appreciate difference, then difference, you will know that your power is in their difference. Their glory is locked up in your difference. Otherwise, we'll just be clones of each other going around and nothing would be exciting about our world. If you open with me to Exodus chapter number 8, I'll show you something. Exodus number 8, let's begin from verse number 20. Exodus chapter number 8 from verse 20. Then the Lord told Moses, get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, then I will send swarms of flies on you. Your officials, your people, and all the houses. The Egyptian homes will be filled with flies and the ground will be covered with them. But this time I will spare the region of Goshen where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord and that I am present even in the heart of your land. Verse 23 is where we're going. It says, I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will begin tomorrow. We know the account of Exodus when God sent Moses to go to Egypt and liberate, bring the people out. The people had spent, already spent 40, 430 years and over for something that was supposed to be a 400 year sojourn. So God went to, Abraham, um, to Moses at the, at the, in the back of the desert or in the wilderness where he was um, tending sheep. 
his father in laws ship and said, look, I need you to go back to Egypt and speak to Pharaoh and bring my people out. We will take a look briefly at the things that Moses looked at and thought that he couldn't make it. But as the Lord sent Moses to, to Pharaoh, after all of the hurdles, Moses eventually left, got to Pharaoh. And in chapter 8, this was the first plague. And he said, go and tell Pharaoh, I said, let my people go. If you see the first account that Pharaoh had with Moses, Moses uh, Pharaoh said, he said, who is God that I would listen to him? And this time God said, tell Pharaoh that I'm going to cause a plague to begin to happen. But tell him that no matter what happens in the land of Egypt, I will put a distinction between my people and the, and, and the people of Egypt. And whatever I plague the Egyptians with will not come to my people. Now, when you read that, you will think that the people of Egypt live far away from, the people of Israel live far away from Egypt. But if you go to Genesis, towards the end of Genesis, when most, um, Joseph had his father and his brothers come to Egypt, what you will find is that Goshen is part of Egypt that was cut off and given to the Israelites to dwell in. And now God is saying, I will cause a swarm of flies to come on all of Egypt. And Goshen, the place that the Egyptians gave to the Israelites, will not be plagued. And God said, he said, this is so that you will know that I am God. I'm going to put a distinction between my people and your people. The first thing I looked at, I saw, and I said to myself was, Father, may I never be called a people of man? Ha! Hey, they will say, no, please. Let me always be your people. Because the odds are, if you are not God's people, there's no distinction, there's no difference. But as long as you are God's people, there's difference. And how do we know we are God's people? With a heart a man believe it. And with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. They, when a man is born, uh, once a man is born again, he becomes a new creature. All things are passed away before all things have become new. The moment you cross the line of faith, you become God's people. If you remember in um, it's um, the same Exodus chapter 6 where we did, where we took out the book Bankable, where God said, I will, I will, I will seven times. And some, one of the I will said, I will make you my people. And this is the benefit. Difference is a benefit of being God's people. I'm not even trying to talk to you about your gifts and your talents. I'm not waxing motivational this morning at all, this afternoon. That's not what I'm saying that when you give your life to Christ, you become God's people and you automatically become a distinct people. What that means is that the way you do ought to be different. They can put you under the same rain and it will fall on you, but the effect will be different. You can live under the same economy, go to the same markets, lodge your money in the same banks, do the same exact things, but your own is different. Why? Because there is a mark of distinction on us. And when I was looking at it this morning, I realized that, oh my God, I am not as ordinary as I think to think sometimes. There is a mark of distinction upon me by the mark of the Holy Spirit. Know what he says? He says, I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. Therefore, let no man trouble me. There is something that makes me different. You can't try. So on this journey, we are distinct. We have been marked with difference. And that's why our language ought to be different. That's why our dress code is different. That's why we hold on to a word for 40 years. Everybody lets go. You said, but my God told me I can't let go. It is the reason why they take you through and they begin to try to process you through a cave. And you stand there and say, by my God. By my God. They're like, what's he talking about? They are pushing you into the hole in the cave. You are praying in tongues. They're like, what's wrong with him? They say it's the darkest part of town. They throw you in. You are, the more you pray, the more people are coming from different places with torchlights, with candles, with floodlights, with the headlights on the car. And you're they're wondering, why, what, what's happening? I'm different. But what I also know is that a very 
minute percentage of God's people know they are different. The devil says to you, if you are different, there's a problem. You ought to be like everybody else. As I was going through this, because I realized that. So the devil begins to blur the lines of difference. It begins to blur the lines of difference. It just makes you think that you are being left behind because you stood your ground and said, this might take a while, but this is where I am planted. It may take a while, but you see, that's because I am not cassava. Cassava may take, I'm not maize. Maize may take three months. But I'm the Chinese bamboo, so to only do my roots may take 10 years. And so when everybody shows up and says, there's nothing coming out of you yet, they say, why don't you change it? But you know that you are different, so you're like, mm, uh, no. I'm going to still keep standing here because I'm different. And when everybody has been cloned, one day they wake up and they are looking for different. And then you begin to hear things like, because I hear that every, to see your sound is like fresh air. And I'm like, I've been here for 20 something years actually. I've been seeing this same exact thing for many years. They're like, oh, you are like a breath of fresh air. Oh, we didn't know that someone. And I'm thinking, I did not change what I am saying. I've been saying this thing all my life. But they have run out of options because everybody's the same. Now, how many of us know that there was a time that it became um, um, morning seminars in church? So every church was holding a seminar on money. There was a time it was love, dating, and marriage. Every church was holding love, dating, and There was no difference. It looked like once they do shul. The point of sheep is for obedience. It's not for sameness. So we started to ape each other. So I would go to Timilade. How did you do your own yesterday? Timilade would say, I did this, I did that, I did that. Whether my congregation looks like Timilade's congregation doesn't matter. I show up and I just regurgitate what Timilade just finished. God forbid. The mark of difference. The reason why we don't love difference is because difference takes a long Long, 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 long time. So everybody is in a hurry. Then he sells you another lie. I'm sure you've seen that before. He says to you, if you're different, you won't be accepted. So he sells you the lie of acceptance. He says, acceptance is great. When you get there, everybody will heal you. Yes, because it's what they know. They are comfortable with it. And really, when you get into the room, because they don't understand different, they stay away from you and they are looking at you, um, um, what's the word, suspiciously. And something on the inside of you begins to cry. You are craving acceptance like no man's business. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me this morning, he said, acceptance is the death of difference. The crave for acceptance is the death of difference. The day you cease enjoying and embracing that you are different from everyone else. That day trouble begins to follow you. So in, in Exodus chapter 8, God said to Moses, tell Pharaoh this. And the end game is that I will put a distinction between my people and your people. When they see my people, they won't need to announce themselves. Everyone will know these are my people. There will be my glory all over them. They can see that mm, there's something different about this one. But all our lives, we're running for sin. When Pastor Inahori was teaching, he said, concerning Nigeria, he said, all the people have solved these problems. How did they do it? The one thing I know about leadership is that you can't import it. Otherwise, we just have just paid some people school fees to go to Harvard. And they will just import it and bring it here and it will work. The reason why imports don't work is because they don't take into any account 
peculiarity. We want to go to a place where they speak one language, even if they speak 14 variations of one language, to a nation that has at least 220 languages. And we just want to just... It doesn't work like that. Until a people embrace their identity in God. And they say we are not like everybody else. So this is what works for us. Those people don't thrive. And the church of Jesus Christ is trying very hard to be like the word. Because they say to us that when you, when you are standing as the church, that you are judgmental. They say you are judging. And then they quote for you your own scripture. Judge not that you might not be judged. And they forget to tell you that the Bible says they are judged already. Then they say to you, oh, you are fanatical. You don't need to be crazy about it for us to know you believe. Meanwhile, Jesus said, sell everything you have and follow. If that's not fanatism, tell me what is it? He says, every, he, said, he says, deny your father, deny your mother. Do, he, says, he says, let the dead bury their dead. He said, just follow. That is, that is the, the template. And then they say to you that just because you, you went to church yesterday evening, and then you came this morning and you went back in the evening, they say this, your fanatism is too much. You too begin to feel sorry for yourself. Say, they are calling me fanatic. Let me just tone it down a bit. And out of toning it down, they take you out difference we think that difference is in get up mm, yeah some of it we think that difference is in just speaking christianism mm, maybe but difference is beyond all of that difference shows up when i get to work on monday morning and i did get in traffic i left home on time but the traffic wouldn't let me get there on time so cut off point at the entrance where you sign in is Five minutes to eight, but I got there at 8.30. And I sign 8.30, and I walk upstairs. That's the difference. Everybody who's coming after me, it, that had a mind to sign 7.35, is now compelled to serve 8.30 or 8.35. When my son was interning at one of the law firms, one day he came home, he said, Mommy, I went for the first time, I went into the break room. And they, they, no, they, they, he introduced himself and they said, you are the Kenichi Modi. And he was like, what did I do? See, you are the one. He said, what did I do? He said, you are the one that signs. And because of that, we can't sign again. I was like, no, there's space in the paper for you to sign. He said, when you have signed 9 a.m., how exact, what do you want me to sign? He said, he looked at them and said, guys, but I can't lie to save my life. There's traffic. I live in Festa. There's always traffic. So the odds are we get here at 9 every day. It's best that I let them know that I got here at 9 than anything else. Difference. We make you bear something. Not because it's convenient. But because you know whose you are. <laughs> oh dear. It's January what? It's to be your first message. You still have to tell people how they are there are elephants who fly. Look at what you are doing. But you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 11. Ephesians even talks about difference. That even in our journey as the body, even in our, that is along with our travel companions, if we are all the same, we will not deliver. So some of us will be the hand, some of us will be the legs, some of us will be the mouth. Some of us will be the shoulders. All of us are just different parts of a one body. And it is in working together, you standing in your place and say, I'm different, but I complement to God. Ungozi says, I'm different, but I complement to Milade. Milade says, I'm different, but I complement to do. He do says, I'm different, but I complement Pastor Val. When we come together, we build a clean picture. If you look at Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11, you will see that Paul was speaking to the church. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's go there quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11. He says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. 
There are responsibilities to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. The body of Christ, this will continue until we, are all, we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like Christian. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Even in our day-to-day -day running as the body of Christ, unless we find the places where we fit, different but yet fitted together, the work doesn't get going. And so that's why in every house there are many gifts. There is no way that one house will have the same kind of grace because what it will mean is that that house will not excel. When I was pastoring with my husband, there was, we had someone, Ungozu would remember this, his job was always to find what could go wrong. It was his default. Before I understood what was happening, every time we have a meeting to discuss something, you are already be shaking in trepidation. I'll be like, he's going to come with a question. He always sees what could go wrong. But after a number of times, I realized that every time you let him question like that, and then we all sit down, we begin to take a look at it and take a look at it, we always arrive somewhere better than where we started out from. So after a while, in fact, if we we'll have those meetings and he's not in church, I'd rather that we waited for him because if he's not there, then everybody's just going to be, oh yes, it's a great idea most of the time. But if he's there, I've never heard but they start from, oh, that is really good. Like, like, he'll always be like, but what? What if the money is not enough? What if the person bringing the money dies? What if, what if? He always would look, come from there. But he never stopped us from executing. He just wanted us to cover our basics and be clear and sure that we have counted the cost so that as we build, we will build well. Does this make sense? Sameness doesn't make sense. Sameness doesn't make sense. Sameness doesn't make sense. So it says in, even in the body, there is prophet, there is evangelist, there is teacher, there is who else? Prophet. All kinds of people. And it is only when these people come together, this ministry gives as you come there, when they come together and each delivers what they have, that we have a rounded and well-fit body. Otherwise, oops. Not only are we created different, we are graced differently for, for the work he has earmarked us for. If you check Ephesians, um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from 12 to 25, you will see that is even a more elaborate on this, um, uh, outline of how different we are. And yet God expects us to excel as one. So why you are different and you should own different, the end is that we can still fit together. So if I can fit to Shola and Shola can fit into Idu, exactly why do I need to be like Shola? Too many sholas in this room will not work. It will not work. It will not work. <laughs> Just the same way too many sister bees. Oh Jesus. Sparks will be flying every single day. Too many idus. We will have to buy all the tissues and all the handkerchiefs in Lagos to pack our tears. But when we need someone to cry for Africa, we already have one person amongst us. We don't need to hire um, mourners. We already have one professional one. She can cry for Africa. But the point is, that's how the world goes around. 
So on this journey, God made it in such a way that we will be different. And that is how he puts... I'm talking to you different in two levels. I don't know if you have caught it. I'm talking to you about the mark of difference that makes you distinct from everybody on the street. And I'm talking about the difference that even happens within the house. That between you and me, there is also meant to be a distinction. In Exodus chapter number four, um, three and four, actually, we saw that Moses, when God met Moses and said to Moses, I want you to go back to Egypt and bring my people out. We saw Moses' pushback. First, Moses said, who will I say sent me? I don't even know your name. God said to him, don't worry, tell them I am that I am. He said, what if they don't believe me? So they scaled that hurdle and God said, don't worry, they will believe you. Then Moses said, ha, ah, God, I can't, I don't even know how to speak. You mean when I get there, I will talk? God said, you are going to talk. And I said, God, I don't know how to talk. And that was where I saw the power of difference. God said, Moses, I will put my, you know, I will be beside your mouth. Moses said, God, I said, I don't know how to talk. So God said, okay, that's not a problem. Aaron, your brother can talk. I will be, I, you will be my mouthpiece and Aaron will be your mouthpiece. No matter what, you will speak to one person, the person will speak to the rest of them. In that place, I saw the dynamics of different. And I might imagine in my mind's eye how Aaron's parents and Moses' parents felt when these children were growing up, even though we know Moses didn't live with them beyond three years uh, to the day of his winning. But they must have noticed that Moses and Aaron were different, even though they were brothers. Aaron was probably the talkative one that said everything he heard. Moses, number one, had a stutter, they said. But beyond that, I think Moses was more of an internalizer. Which is why the day he broke the dam, he struck the rock and God said, your anger is too much. But it would be because he didn't express himself a lot. So everything he went through was on the inside of him. But they were different, yet both of them were effective. Moses may not have made it into the promised land, but Moses raised the Joshua. So he wasn't up to the guy a failure. His strength worked in the place that he, um, he could deploy it. Do you understand that? So God said to Moses, don't worry. If you don't want to talk, it's okay. That is very instructive. That God will not make me do what he did not optimize me to do. Shit, Alama, Handele, bro. Somebody will get it in 2024. He said, God, I don't know how to talk. I'm sure God remembered. I put him together. True. So don't worry, Aaron will do the talking. But did you notice in all that I don't know how to talk, Moses knew how to talk to God. So he said, don't worry, Aaron, we go with you. We will process this thing. It's okay, be different. And that was how Moses did the work that he did. Every time, all the time he needed to talk to Pharaoh, Aaron was the one that spoke. Moses would tell Aaron, this is what God is doing now. Aaron never heard what God is doing, which is why when he got into the, um, they got into the wilderness and Moses went up the mountain and Moses had not come back, Aaron can't hear directly from God. He could only hear from Moses. He imagined that he heard from God. He built a golden scarf. When you step out of your place, you will do what you are not supposed to do. Shit, I hand Libra. Difference. 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 When we first got married, and for many years, <sighs> Mark had a word to describe me. I speak English because my husband speaks English, yeah? And the word, the first time he used it to describe me, I had to look for dictionary. And I had, I don't read dictionary before, but I did not see that word. But when he used it, I said, let me find out what it meant. The word my husband will use to describe me is iconoclastic. Oh. <laughs> because I just had a thing that did not let me go in the direction that everyone else was going. It just won't work. 
when everybody's painting their walls cream, I'm painting mine orange, and they're wondering, ah, orange, how? How orange? I'm like, yeah. In, it's calm enough. They're like, orange is not calm. It's creamy. I'm like, it's very calming for me. But it's who I am. And it's who God wants me to be deployed as. Many years ago, I came into a cycle. Fantastic women, very powerful. And my big problem was, I took a look at them and their gifting, and I just became a hot mess. By myself, in my room, thinking about them, I'll be having a meltdown. These are my friends and my sisters. But every time I got in their midst, I was not like any one of them. It freaked me out. And I'm like, how can? Look at all their credentials. Look at everything. What am I doing there? I don't even feel like I belong. And what, you, what was a very enjoyable um, relationship started to stress me out. Before, when we would have a meeting, a couple of days before that, I'll begin to say to my husband, I want to go, but I don't want to go. And he'll be like, are they oppressing you? I'm like, no, but if you just need to sit at that table and hear the big things these people are talking about. I have, I do not know. Some of them, I'm like, uh, these things exist. So I felt like fish out of water. And I was going to continue like that until one day God said to me, calm down. I didn't send you there to be like them. I sent you there to be you. And I said, who am I? And he defined who I was in their midst. And that just resolved my problem. And from that point on, it became something that I truly enjoyed. And I look forward to. And I knew I could contribute to. Difference on this journey. One of the... Th no, it's too early in the year. Let me not find trouble. Let me go on. <laughs> to be able to deal with difference, there are a number of things we need to focus on and talk about for a bit. Number one is deal with the crave for acceptance. The root cause of, us, of the crave for acceptance is insecurity. When you look at yourself and somehow the whispers of the devil that you are not enough are overly magnified above the, comf the whispers of God that says you are more than enough. The tendency is you would seek for attention and crave attention from all the wrong places. And the moment that becomes your modus operandi, you will begin to buy yourself, downplay your difference, erode your difference, do nothing about your difference until you become like them. And when you become like them, do you know what they say? They say those people. You are a statistics. When they want to talk, they say 55 people. Eh? Me, a me. Me, me, this daughter of the Ada of Michael or Mocha Ferreira, this lady. Me, number. No, I can't be. The one that Jesus died for. Hi, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. But unless you deal with the crave of acceptance, you will always be that person that is consistently trying to um, you know, erode your personality. Just split it down a bit. Just so that somebody will accept you and say now. The thing about that acceptance is after a while they will still drop you and go. So I had to make peace with myself. I don't go to school. That's still fine. There are many things I don't know. But I also know a few things. So the ones that I know, I will stick with them and just continue to get better at them because that's my mark of difference. Difference is good. Difference is good. So you need to work on this crave for acceptance. Work on the crave for acceptance. I saw in the book of Genesis that Joseph dreamt. Both dreams that Joseph dreamt highlighted his difference. How many of us know that? 
Say, so, ah, that Joseph, well, they were all doing, you know, um, binding sheaves in the, in, in the, in the field. Everybody's sheaf bowed down. Joseph's own was standing straight. It was a mark of difference. They were looking at, everything about Joseph was different. On top of that, his father knew he was different. So his father even made a coat of many colors to put upon him to say, this one, I don't know what he is, but he's just different. We can't just pack him along with everybody else. This one is different. And this is where we don't like, to, why we don't like to be different. His own brothers didn't like him. They were very miffed by his difference. His difference was intimidating. The thing is, they did not know how his difference would manifest, but they were intimidated. And they were so intimidated that they made up their minds. They said, we will kill him and his difference will die with him. So when you think that, oh, well, Stabi says I'm different, so tomorrow you are just dancing, no. They are coming after you. They will want to kill you because of your difference. Because they don't even know the half of what your difference is meant to bet, but it is intimidating. So who she? She just walks in and she says, who, who should she say she be? Mm. Many years ago, I was in church. You ask me where I am now, Abby. I was in church. And um, one day I wasn't doing anything. So I wore a pantsuit to church. And then somebody, after service, I didn't even know that service was over, called me to school me in how because I wear trousers I will not go to heaven. See, I'm born again now. When he finished, I told him, thank you. Then I did like this. I said, make me bet. <laughs> me and you. I'm not talking about who will die first to, but who they will first open heaven door for. <laughs> may we bet. Because I didn't understand what trousers have to do. <laughs> Stop it. You want to go to heaven? Yes, I want to go to heaven. <laughs> But the guy did not make the effort to understand me. He had no idea. But he just decided that what he saw on the outside was who I was. And what he saw on the outside was not as threatening as he made it to be. But he decided there and then that I wouldn't make heaven. I told him, I said, me are you. If you make heaven at all, Make we, when we reach there, may we measure mansion, may we see. But the point is, when people don't know, what people don't understand, they are bound to. Criticize is even a good thing. Because we imagine that when you critique something, that it is to the end of making it better. They just crash what it is that they don't understand. So, uh, Joseph's brother said, let's kill him. Do you know that if they had killed Joseph, they shot themselves in the foot knee? How many of us know that when the famine came, it was Joseph that saved their sorry something? They said, let's kill him. Then Ruben came up and said, let's not kill him. Let us um, put him in the pit for now. And the Bible said Reuben's plan was when they leave, he will come back and fetch him out of the pit. But Reuben was unstable. That's what his father said. Because of his, his instability, he didn't sit in one place. He got up and he walked. I don't know what he went to look for. They now sold him. But all things work together for good. So they sold him with his difference. His difference was the boldness with which to stand and say, I dreamt to, uh, uh, guys, make one come. I, I, I just make, I tell them, I say, I dream yesterday. The dream where I dream, I'd be like, say, when time reaches, I'm going to bow for me. But that same thing, it wasn't so much about the fact that that was going to happen. It was about the fact that he had something on the inside of him that would make him the preserver of their lives. So they sold him to uh, Potiphar 
And ultimately, in Potiphar's house, he rose to the challenge because difference will always speak. He ran Potiphar's house like it was a tight ship. The Bible said because he was there, God was with him. Because God was with him, he started to make money. Potiphar was prospering. Potiphar put him in charge of all. Then difference again. Because difference attracts adversity. House. Because of his difference, Mrs. Potiphar saw him. Someone will think this is about seduction. But in God, it's never about the first thing. This was about corrupting a seed. So the devil's push. He thinks this difference will get him where he's going. Let's truncate his journey. That was what it was about. So Mrs. Potiphar came at him again. He stood in his place of his difference. He said to him, he said, will I do this thing? And sin against my master and against God. So I can't do it. My master hasn't offended me, even if he did. I can't sin against my master and against God. So I'm different. I cannot go this route. Again, because he stood his ground that I'm different, what happened? They gave him a trophy. What did happen? They threw him in jail. Because difference tends to, when you still word difference, it tends to attract adversity. Especially in the world such as the one we live in. But with every step down that the devil said he had thought he had Joseph exactly where he wanted him. Where did we end up? Joseph was a step closer to destiny. Be if his brothers were not upset with him, they would not have thought to kill him. If they were not upset with him, they would not have resolved to throw him in the pit. If they were not upset with him, they, some of them would not have said, let's cuckoo sell him off. But with each of those things that were adverse against him, with every step he was closer, with every step he was closer, with every step he was closer to God. To what God had. That what the mark of difference was making them hate him. Every push, they were pushing him closer to where he was supposed to go. And we saw Joseph. When eventually the day come, came. It was that same difference that made him stand in front of Pharaoh. And they told Pharaoh, I get it. This is and this and this is what your dream is about. But beyond your dream, because if I were the one, I would just do the barest minimum of you want me to interpret a dream out and I'll go back. But he said, Pharaoh, I am anointed like that. I'm different. Let me grant you some jara on top of this matter. This is what and what and what you can do to stem the tide that is coming. And Pharaoh said, Is there any man wiser than you? And psh, the thing about difference is it is what will save you and it is what will potentially kill you. <laughs> Daniel. If you see Daniel and his friends in Daniel chapter 1. The Bible said Daniel made up his mind that I'm different. Can't be eaten from the king's. It may be the king's food, but it's still an abomination. And we saw how that one ended. I said, deal with the crave for acceptance. Deal with the crave for acceptance. Because in case you didn't know, it's insecurity that makes you crave acceptance. If they would just like me. If they would just like me. If they would just like me. And I'm thinking, God likes you already. Who cares who else likes you? Eh? Or does... Which one was I mean? It, it, it doesn't change. Uh, in Edo State, we say, you know, it, does it affect the price of bread? No. As long as it does not change the price of bread, you, inconsequential, new. No. Sameness is what the world craves. Sameness is what the world celebrates. That's why trash and more trash and more trash. I went somewhere with Stashola on Friday. It was at game. And they were playing music. You know how those... I, I remembered again why I don't go to public places anymore. And the song was, they don't bring light to. 
ne pardon shame or something like it's actually music personal horror if i ever heard a horrible song that was it and i was thinking somebody produced this song and somebody gave it airplay on radio something is wrong with them all of them together like what is this I, I, the people who know the song already are dancing to it oh that's a great song jesus but do you understand this conversation we're having so you find that the songs that sell are the crass no creativity whatsoever from beginning to the end and i'm still wondering please wake up those dead musicians let them come back because right now i don't know what's happening when i was a kid when when, when i was a child my father would play bonnie magic every song had a lesson every song had something now the more crass it is, the more it will sell. I don't understand it. The second thing we must do, if we would embrace and, I don't know whether it's second, why are you looking at me like it's not number two, you know, because I mean, don't take your number that works for you. After all, we are different. <laughs> Run from comparison. Because some of us don't want to be the same with the other person. We just want to compare with them. My house is bigger than your house. My car is bigger than your car. My... And the thing about comparison is the more your focus is in comparing, the less your focus is in manifesting your brilliance. Because your difference is your brilliance. In ministry, we want to be like everybody it takes a talking to myself once every six months to continue to do it like this. I have to sit down and have a meeting with myself. Say, be the music, yes. What did God tell you? This and this and this. Uh-huh. So just keep it there. I'm like, but behave yourself. Just stay where you are. Stay, maintain your lane. Okay, be the music, I've heard because otherwise you always think that what the grass is what greener on the other side yes it might be greener but i can tell you two things number one is fake grass 80 percent of the greener grass is fake eh? uh, so that's what i will tell you now it looks really green and lush in fact the green will tell you that it's fake the second part is it the one that is actually grass has snakes on the inside it any which way you don't need it you don't want it does that mean that people can't excel that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that everything you crave that makes you look down on what god has made you in this journey is not necessary because the way i see it the bible says that god is all-knowing if i needed to be like that grass on the other side of the fence he would have made me that grass he's all-knowing and every time you don't embrace your difference let me tell you what you're saying you are saying god doesn't know what he did that is the unspoken conclusion that you draw say god don't know what know they do if you know what they do for make me like va can you see it Run from comparison. Comparison kills the genius in us all. I read a study, and I was sharing it when we had the master class yesterday. I read a study, and the study says that children, children before that, ninety-five percent of children before the age of twelve are geniuses. And it's simple. It's just because they don't mind coloring outside the lines. They do what occurs to them they don't need to ask is this right correct thinking or what we call convergent thinking is not their style 
Everything about a child under 12 is push the envelope. That's why at what in the in the age three and above, when we call the terrible twos or two and above, everything you say to them, come and eat, no, but they are hungry. They cried that told you that they were hungry, you brought food, their first response is no. Why? Because as far as they're concerned, you can't make me do anything. I will do exactly what my difference tells me to do. That same research says that when a child crosses 12 years, that remember between age 1 and 12, 95% are geniuses because they can think divergently. Once they cross 12, only 5% can think divergently. The remaining 90 think convergent. Everything, you know, they've started to go to schools. At 12, some of them have entered secondary school. So even though, you know, when they were small, when we give them color, um, crayons, and paper, it, it doesn't matter what they do, do and they draw. We say, oh, this is nice. We put it on. For those of you who had fridge, you put it on your refrigerator door. Yes? By the time they become 12, when a child comes home and he colored outside the line, you want to sit the child down and tell him how much you paid for school fees. Yeah. Don't disgrace me. How dare you color? So we educate them to lose their genius. Oh, by the time they are audience, if point something percent are still geniuses. Because now life has slapped you left, right, and center. Say, Jekori, we just follow the lane, I tell you. And that's why you see people driving against traffic. When you stop them to say, this is not how they do it. Because 20 cars are driving ahead of them against traffic. They will be like, you are the way. Can't you see the number of cars going? Different. is scary. For the man who has not gotten to the place that he's centered in God. To recognize that as... As... as um, as exacting as difference can be, difference is where your power is. I heard a man, a man of God say, he said, the glory is in the difference. There is nothing in same. Everything that is the same is cheap. They say to me that that's why Rolls Royce is expensive. That's why Rolls Royce does not advertise. Everybody, even fresh out of school, if you save very well for five years in Nigeria, you can buy a Tukumbo. Toyota. Sometimes you can work for 30 years and cannot buy a Tokun Tokumbo Rolls Royce. Because it's different. They did not make them to be all over the place. They made them to be luxury cars. So you have to, there is something you attain to buy it. Can I say to you, just because I don't know what Esther used to describe to you, that the moment the Spirit of God came upon you, you became a Rolls Royce? Or is there something big? I don't know cars really. I don't care. It's transportation. Whether it's Rolls Royce or it's B2, it takes it. Although I know I can't. B2, I just don't understand B2. <laughs> I don't understand it. But the point is, a car is transportation for me. But the point I'm also trying to make to you is that if you understand cars... Then you are the Rolls Royce of believers. Why? Because God has put his mark upon you. If you understand jewelry, shall I, which is the most gold or no, there's something higher than gold, Abby. Diamond. Diamond. Da, hey, you are the diamond of them. Oh, Jesus. The point, brethren, is that we're not supposed to be like everybody, we're not chickens. We're eagles. There is something that God has called us to. And what makes you qualify is not doing what I do. is doing what you are optimized for. On this journey, except you embrace your difference, you will be like everybody else. If I continue to just do what everybody thought I should do, nobody would know me. Maybe they will know me amongst many. And I'm not even saying I am known, but I'm different. And I'm different. And that's the thing every time that I celebrate about me. And I believe that's what you celebrate about me. Just the same way you are different. If today there's anything to celebrate, it is the fact that you are different. You need to begin to ask God and to show you what your difference carries. Because every difference carries a solution. That's where I want to peg it. Every time Joseph came and said, I dreamt to, 
you bowed down before me he came back again and said i dreamt to my son my my star was shinier than your star what joseph was really saying as offensive as it sounded was that a day is coming without me you won't make it how many of us know that every one of us in this room a day is coming someone will not make it unless you live as who god has called you to i i don't know whether you see it now that can make you really feel really good with yourself but it should also scare you because if you don't leave it and someone doesn't make it you just carry the pot of blood though do you see it on this journey you're not supposed to be like you there will be no fun in that on this journey if i'm like you it won't be fun at all difference is good and difference is god's mark of distinction on you so that the world will know that he is your god you need to begin to talk to god at this point speak to him i will start from father thank you for making me different thank you for making me different thank you because i can never again be lost in the crowd father lord i can never again be lost in the crowd thank you lord for making me different then i want you to speak to god and say lord help me to understand my difference help me to understand my difference help me to understand my difference i don't have to pray like everyone prays for my prayers to be valid i do not need to teach like every other person teaches for my teachings to be valid i do not need to be exactly like the next person for my existence to be valid i am just exactly who god has called me to my difference is a solution father thank you lord help me to understand and help me to embrace my difference father lord the solution that is embedded in my difference may i break it in the name of jesus may my difference not be a wasted investment the difference that god has invested in me may it not waste oh god father lord wherever i go may it be that that is the fresh thing people will see teach me to put it together that i might be able to live the life that you've called me to thank you lord for making me different on this journey thank you lord for making me different on this journey thank you lord because i'm not my old like my other five siblings thank you lord because i'm not like my 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 friends thank you lord because i'm not like every other woman in this room thank you lord because i'm different father may my difference be useful for heaven may my difference be useful for heaven may my difference be useful for heaven father may my difference be useful to kingdom may i because of who i am in this day may i be a solution oh god to many in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and whether you're in this room or you're online if you have not given your life to jesus who's going to teach you your mark of difference today i want you to say lord jesus i give you my life this woman is talking about difference i want you to step into an understanding of how to steward what it is that makes me different lord i receive it oh god every crave for acceptance i renounce it today everything that makes me compare myself with another i drop it lord i just want to be who you called me to be help me oh god to embrace and steward my my difference right in the name of jesus i am me oh god i choose to remain me as long as i'm in you oh god you have marked me for difference and distinction lord may i deliver on that difference and distinction to the glory of your name oh god father lord i honor and i worship you i give you all the praise remember again say lord jesus i give you my life if you'd like to give your life to jesus say again lord jesus i give you my life lord jesus i give you my life lord jesus i give you my life father lord we worship you we give you all the praise thank you lord for making us different 
to you be all the glory oh god thank you father thank you father in jesus mighty name amen and amen